what's going on, y'all? Uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 7, Episode 3, All T All Shade. Now, this episode should have just been called Rude Old Bitches because everybody was kind of rude on this motherfucker. But, I don't know, the episode didn't really do much for me. Um, you know, this felt like a filler episode already in the season. I don't know, maybe it was just me. But, I'm just saying, coming off the back of all the two episodes that were full of drama, it wasn't really that much drama drama. I guess that's what it is. But anyway, it wasn't a bad episode, I'm going to say that. Um, you know, we got Kenya talking to her aunt. Her aunt said, baby, you need to get a cactus or some shit, because that's probably the only thing that you can keep around, because you keep killing everything else. I said, all right. You know, Miss Miss Auntie Kenya, you know, Kenya's aunt was not here for her ass. She was not here for her ass. She was over her shit. She was clearly over it by the shit that she was telling her. You know, Kenya was trying to tell her. She was like, have you talked to the um, other girls? And she was like, look, bitch, let me tell you this. All these girls have said something about me. They've been mean to me. They've been attacking me. They've been dissing, crying, woo, 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 woo. woo. And she was like, why would I want to? Basically, Kenya is like, I'm going to give them the opportunity to come and talk to me. And that makes me to show me that they really, you know, feel bad or whatever, want to work on the things or whatever. And, um... Um, King your auntie was like, girl, please. No, it's not about that. You can't expect people to just come up to you. You have to be the bigger person in a situation sometimes. That's how it works. You have to be the bigger person. And, um, you know, if you want to kill somebody, you kill them with kindness. You kill them by being nice. You win them over by being nice and all this shit so they can see, oh, okay, maybe I was wrong about King. She's not as crazy and fucked up and delusional as she did. You know, and I was like... Well, auntie got some sense, okay? Auntie got some sense, and she telling you right. You know, is Kenya going to heed that shit? Who the fuck knows? You know, um, the same thing with the Apollo situation. You know, it is what it is. Moving on, Candy meeting up with Portia and uh, Phaedra. She telling Portia because Portia was the first one there. What happened at Cynthia's party and how come she wasn't invited and what Cynthia said about, you know, they just going back and forth. You know, they gossiping amongst each other. And I was like, girl, y'all just messy as fuck. But I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, she was like, well, Cynthia said that, you know, you can come because of the shit that you said about her and going back and forth in the blogs and shit. I was like... Oh, okay. You know, me and Portia was like, all right, whatever the fuck. You know, she can feel how she want to feel. And then that's when Phaedra comes in and, you know, Candy tells her, everybody who came to the party and then told her about the shit with Apollo. And Phaedra was like, she got the response that I didn't think that she would give. But then again, you know, like, she did Southern Belle, like Cynthia said in her confessional. Um, you know, of course, she's going to put up that uh, Southern Bell Act, so of course she's going to apologize. And I don't know if I said my opinion about, um, should Phaedra apologize? Because Phaedra actually said, well, shit, maybe I do owe her apology because she was going off of what Apollo was saying. And in my opinion, it wouldn't have gotten so messy. It wouldn't have gotten so messy and Phaedra wouldn't have said most of the shit that she said if it wasn't for the fact that her husband lied to her. And she, being the wife that she is, she listened to what her husband said. So, of course, she went on the head and took her husband's side. That's because they're married or whatever. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. But also, actions speak a whole lot of motherfucking words, okay, without the words being there. Your action speaks loud. And Kinky Boo, I'm sorry to tell you this, but, um, hmm... Don't sit here and quit acting like, oh, my name has been vindicated. My good name has been restored. No, baby, it really hasn't. I never seen a good name in you yet. Because, yes, Apollo lied on your ass, and that was fucked up. That was disgusting for him to lie on his dick like that. But you also was playing into it, boo-boo. You not 100% out of, um, you know, blame for this shit. You not 100% innocent in this. You was flirting with him. You was playing with him. You played into it. You played it up. And I don't care if you was doing it to get at Phaedra or whatever the fuck, bitch, you had a part into it too. Okay? So, you know, I still feel the same about Ken. No, no, whatever. And if Phaedra wants to apologize, Phaedra can apologize. Would I have apologized? Hell no. Hell motherfucking no. Because, bitch, you played into it too. Unless she was going to apologize for her actions, 
as it and, and as well, then hell, we can both apologize to each other. But then, other than that, it ain't gonna be no one way street where I'm just gonna apologize and you're not gonna say shit, bitch. Please get the fuck out of here with that one. Um, moving on, Cynthia and King, uh, uh, Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben came up in there in that pink shirt like he's gonna go dance at a jamboree or some shit. But, um, make me some dirty rice or whatever. What the girl name? Cynthia was just, you know, they talking about shit that happened and, um, you know, how Apollo lied. And you're like, man, I called this bitch a hoe. And I ain't never seen a man lie on his dick like that. I was like, Peter, I'm here for you like that. You know, yeah, I ain't. Psst, that's fucked up when a nigga do that shit, you know. And, um... <laughs> They basically, once again, talking about Portia's situation. Um, how come Portia went there? Some shit that they was talking about. Either way, Portia came up, and then Nene came up. And Cynthia, here's my thing. You keep saying that you're over the shit that's going on with you and Nene. You're over the friendship. You're no longer up her ass. But yet you keep finding a way to bring her into every fucking scene, every conversation that you've had in these past three episodes. You are not over this girl. You have not moved on as you claim because you keep on and then you upset at the fact, you, know, you now you upset at Portia and you thinking that Portia took, you know, um, basically your residency of Nene's ass and now she's the new, as you say, puppeteer. She's playing um, two masters, uh, two puppeteer masters or whatever the shit. She called Portia the puppeteer. And I'm like, no, bitch, she the puppet. Okay, Nene is the puppeteer. Whichever way that she did it, she worded it wrong. And I was like, Cynthia, get your shit together if you're going to try to read somebody. Read it correctly, all right? You know, I'm just like, girl, you need to sit your ass down and you need to talk to fucking Nene and get it clear out the way so you can have some fucking closure. Because, yeah, you probably don't want to be friends with her no more, but you keep bringing her up because you still got some shit to say to her that you need to get off your chest. And you need to go ahead and get that shit off your chest and let it be done with so you won't have to bring her up and mention her anymore. So she can know clearly, this is how it is, this how I feel, and... I don't give a fuck if we don't be friends no more because at this point, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm a new motherfucking person, and it is what it is. You go about your day, and I go about mine. That's what she needs to tell Nene because I'm tired of her bringing her shit up and saying that she not, um, she over her when she really not. Girl, get the fuck. Get the whole fuck. Then we get tired, <laughs> tired and, um, candy. Bitch, they got sex toys all up in the bed and shit. She talking about getting pregnant. He like, look, boo. Getting pregnant. I got to be out the country going, I mean, going from New York and back and forth to New York for the next four, uh, four months or whatever. So, you know, I don't know. And then, I don't know about this. Like, putting shit on hold. Candy is just like, I just want to have somebody to come home to. You know, every night, just have somebody come home to. I was like, y'all should have talked about this before y'all got married and, you know, figured out the logistics of all of this. And then Candy put out there that, hey, your daughter coming out here. And we got to get ready for that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. They was either about to have sex or he was a little bit turned on or it was cold. Cold up in there because tired nipples were, uh, they were rock solid hard. Okay, they was just protruding and poking. Then we get this shit with Claudia and um, Nene, not Nene. Claudia and Kenya going to furniture store, get some furnishing for the uh, Claudia's new home or whatever. She gets her little background. I don't care to repeat it. I was very much bored with that scene. And I'm just going to fly back. I mean, if you saw it, you saw it. It's nothing to reiterate because it was nothing. Um, We got <laughs> Nene coming back. What was up with her fucking makeup? I don't know what it is, but the lipstick and on her... The foundation that they use on her face... Plus the lipstick, the color that they use, plus the that gold shit, that gold platinum glow, whatever blonde that she has in her hair, it's 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 just not working out together. It's just it's just ugh ugh in the confessionals and all that stuff. I all these seasons later, and, and Nene still ain't got it right in that department. I just don't understand. And she got money, and they can't fix up any better than that. But hey, who the fuck am I looking my shit? It's just fuck right now. But hey, I'm post, so you know it is what it is. But, um, anyway, I'm just saying, she goes over, she's back in, um, Atlanta, she goes over to see Portia, Portia and her having a good time, talking and all this stuff, and, you know, Portia catching her up, like Portia was at this shit, 
Okay, that's what kind of threw me off with Portia. I was like, bitch, you are really talking like you was at this motherfucking party and you saw all this stuff, especially when the shit happened with Apollo and she was talking about that. And she was like, girl, you won't believe this. And then Apollo apologized. He was lying on Kenya about this and all that. I said, girl, was you there? Was you there? Or you just talk, uh, repeating what Candy said? It was, okay, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I do like sometimes, sometimes. I do be into people who be reiterating stories and shit like that. And they can sell it so good as if they was there. And I be sitting there like, girl, what else happened? Mm-mm, mm-mm. See, no, it wouldn't have went down like that, bitch. You know, you got to get them enthralled into it. You know what I'm saying? And Portia was trying to get her little TV time in. So, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know? She ain't holding the peach no more. So, hey, fuck it. She don't give a fuck no more. Portia, I, I actually like this new outspoken Portia. Um, it's working for her. Because from her first coming onto Real Housewives of Atlanta and being so, you could tell she was kind of controlled and stupid. I mean, she's still kind of stupid, but you know, she's more outspoken, and it's and it shows that she's still trying to come into her own person or whatever. So I, I, I guess. But anyway, she started talking about the Cynthia situation and how Cynthia don't like her and said that she was talking shit about her, you know, being one way and then being another way. <laughs> Nene was over that. When Portia brought up Claudia, <laughs> Nina was like, yeah, I know of her. I was like, oh, okay. That's the only reason why I may be a little bit interested in the Claudia thing. I don't care about Claudia by herself. I just want to know what's the beef and the backstory between the animosity, whatever that's going to be shown between Claudia and um, Nene. That's it. But, um, you know, yeah, she started talking about Apollo and how he lied on his dick. And here go Nene. She was like, so all of a sudden he want to come out and apologize? Like, what the fuck is he doing all this for? Who put him up to this? Is he just trying to clear his motherfucking conscience before he go to jail? Bye, Apollo. Take your ass to jail. Because we all was thinking the same thing. Like, where's all this coming from? Like, did the um producers tell him to do this or whatever? I don't know. He was tightening up loose, loose ends. But, um... <laughs> Let me stop. But yeah, you got fat. And speaking of Apollo, Phaedra with the kids, and you know Apollo going to the lawyer, the divorce attorney, and basically trying to get that shit together. I mean, we already know what's going on. He trying to see what's gonna happen and if they gonna get divorced and the rules and regulations and which ones they can get and all this stuff and you know Phaedra worried about her boys growing up without her with her father and all this stuff and yada yada yada. You know I did hear that he did have a um interview, uh, one of his first interviews um since he been in jail and he said no divorce papers has been filed or he claimed probably he just didn't get a check but I don't know. Do y'all think? Leave in the comments. After all this, not just what we're seeing now, but I'm put together everything that's been going on between Phaedra and Apollo from, you know, his do dirt ways and Phaedra and her shady ways. You know, I like Phaedra, but I can call a bitch a bitch and a bitch shady if I call her out on the shit. Phaedra ain't fucking innocent, okay? I'm just saying that. She ain't innocent. My hat is just, ugh. I'm just hurt. You know, I'm so tempted to restart this video, but I don't feel like it. But anyway, yeah, tell me how y'all feel. Do y'all think that there is a chance that all of a sudden Phaedra gonna say, fuck this shit. I'm a, I'm a hanging there with you. You know, I was just hurt. I'm doing this off of emotion. No, I don't want to get divorced or whatever. Um, I'm still stick, th stick in there. Or do you really think that they really gonna get a divorce? You know, um... Yeah, and put down in the comments if it was your you was in this situation, what would what would you do? Cause bitch, now I can see if Paolo didn't do anything else, and he made a mistake, then he fucked up and he slipped up and did this again. You know, I could see a bitch stand by his side like, okay, baby, you 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 know, you've been a good dude up until this point. This ain't nothing major. I'm still hold you down, but you gotta look at everything that's going on on the outside and shit. But, um, <laughs> moving on to this scene with Candy. Candy, Todd, and Riley. So, you got Todd bringing, um, um, his daughter, his daughter over to the house because she's finally moving in with him. And the conversation between them, the awkwardness, I should say, that's what it was. It was just so damn awkward because you can clearly see that 
there's no real, real relationship between the two girls. And I really wish that in this process of them dating Todd and Candy that, you know, the girls probably could have got to know each other or hung up a little bit more with each other. Because clearly you could tell that they really didn't do that. The awkward silence and everything. And I know it's an age different, but, you know, at least have some, you know, type of communication. I mean, I, I can't really say that they didn't because, you know, they don't show it. But, you know, it just felt a little awkward. And you can clearly tell <laughs> Riley is like, Riley was just looking like, mm. So now you bring this motherfucker up in the house and now you gonna bring his daughter? Fuck, you just taking all my space and free time. You know, she was like, this is my shit. That's the type of attitude that she was giving to me. But, and her ass, 11 years old, looking grown as shit with that full weave in. And I was like, okay, 11? 11? Bitch, Riley looked like she was 18 years old and Kyla looked like she was 11. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but, um, basically... You know, they trying to uh, uh, have a little small talk between the girls and whatever and telling them y'all need to, um, you know, communicate with one another and get along and, you know, kick it with each other, get to know each other. And the question was asked, <laughs> what time did you come in or go out when you was in New York? And Kyla was like, whatever her name is, Ty's daughter was like, um, I stay out till like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Riley was like, what? <laughs> Riley said... I mean, we down here in Atlanta. I mean, who stays out till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning? Ain't nothing out here that's open like that that you need to be staying now. I said, shit, Riley. Riley was trying to read, okay? In that moment, Riley stopped being Riley, and Mama Joyce came out of that in Riley's body. Like, she was the essence of Mama Joyce. Because after she said that, Ty's daughter was like, wait, well, when you get my age... You will understand. You will see all the shit that you'll be trying to do when you get my age. And then Riley was like, but see, when I get your age, mm, I'm going to be quiet. And then Candy said, uh-uh, girl, go ahead and say what you got to say. She was like, what I was going to say is when I get your age, I'll be in college. I said shit. <laughs> it got silent. I said, Riley. I mean, she said what most of us probably was thinking, but damn. <laughs> it was just so fucking funny to me. I don't know. It was just, it was just. I, I chuckled. I said, look at Mama Joyce influence. Go on here, bitch. Smart ass mouth. She got her ass together, though. But, um, talking about give me $100 a week just for doing chores and shit. No, bitch, you supposed to do that. <laughs> $100? Man, if my allowance was $100, ooh, ooh, okay. But, um, let's get into this main, main shit. The episode got good at the end, like at the very end. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Cynthia motherfucking Bailey. I have to just address you for a minute. When you first came on 106 and Park, damn, did you see how swiftly that came out? Just fuck me up. When you first came on Real Housewives of where did that come from? When you first came on Real Housewives of Atlanta, a lot of us liked you because... You weren't really much of a shit starter, but then we kind of figured out that you kind of shady on the low, but you did kind of keep the peace just a little bit. You know, you didn't get involved. You didn't argue. You didn't do all that stuff. Okay. We kind of got at your ass because you was a little lackey for Nene. We saw that. Nene could shit out some bullshit and you would sit there and just eat it up. Just really eat it up and say, no, Nene is right in everything that she do. Okay. And that's what really was kind of, you know, turning us off about you. You couldn't speak up for yourself. You had no backbone. Now, all of a sudden, you and Nene have this little disagreement, this argument, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, during this reunion show and last season, and then you're friends with Kenya now. And it seems almost as if you're trying to say, now that Nene is out of my life, I found my voice. And it's really fucked up how you pride yourself on being mature, but yet, the way that you acted in this um, interaction with Portia, it was so petty, it was so childish, and it was so fucked up. And I said, girl, what? I'm not here for it. And mostly, it's because of the way that you come off, Miss Cynthia Bailey. And I just don't understand it. Like, you coming off 
so damn hard, trying to be so damn forceful. I don't, I mean, it's like you got a point to prove that you're trying to prove to us that you have a fucking backbone and you can stand up for yourself. But you stand up for yourself to someone who's weaker than you. Let's be honest, Porsche is a weak bitch. But Porsche will whoop that ass if, she, if it comes to, you know, I'm just saying. Um, You talking about, as soon as the girl come up, granted if she was late, you talking shit about her jump shoot, jumpsuit which look pretty nice to me if you ask and she look good in it okay you want to say it's cheap bitch it's probably as cheap as the weave that was on your motherfucking head in your confessional that's one thing but as soon as she sits down she says hello and you was like oh glad you're here because i was just about to leave you're over an hour late and all this shit and you just giving nothing but fucking attitude and then Portia trying to say, okay, well, I'm glad you didn't leave. And, you know, it is what it is. Portia didn't come there defensive. You came, you just sitting there so on the defense. You ready to bite her head off. You ready for an argument to ensue. You ready for this drama to happen. And I'm just like, girl, what? Calm your motherfucking nerves. Where was this big, bad, barking like a motherfucking dog, Cynthia, when you was going, when Nene was talking shit about you? Nene made your motherfucking ass cry when she was talking about your parenting skill. You didn't say shit. All you did was cry. But then this bitch talking about, you talking about some. Portia said that you was a flip-flopper. Now you want to be all big and bad. But you couldn't say that shit to Nene. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And it was just so fucking immature acting. And for once, Portia was actually more mature acting than your ass. This bitch was so fucking mature in this goddamn instance to the point that this bitch said, knew, and used the word flabbergasted properly in a sentence. I was befuddled when I heard it came out her mouth. I said, what? She didn't stumble over it or anything. And Portia kept her cool. Now, as soon as, if I was Portia, it wouldn't have got that far. Because Portia was like, you know, I just came here to see where we're at. You know, if anything could be, you know, happen or whatever, be, uh, you know, talked about. It wouldn't have never got to that point. As soon as the way that I seen and heard the way you're talking to me at the beginning, before I can even get my point across, I would have walked my ass right back out. And that would have told me everything. We don't need to talk no more. It's over and done with. You You didn't said enough without even saying. And it, it was just like, girl, what fucking point was you trying to prove? Okay? Ain't nobody, really, Cynthia, Cynthia, baby. Ain't nobody rushing to be your friend like they gonna get a come up off of you. Okay? Like, I don't know. It's, it's not that really big of a thing to know that, oh, I got on my resume that I'm Cynthia Bailey's friend or some shit like that. Like, it's really gonna be detrimental to my career or to my person that... Cynthia fucking Bailey is not talking to me no more. That's how she was coming off like. And I'm just like, girl, uh, it was just, a, it was, it was irritating me. It was irking me so much. I was like, who is the fuck is this? Who is it? Who is it? Then trying to bring up Nene once again, saying Portia was doing all that stuff and saying the stuff in the blogs or whatever because of Nene's it sounded very Nene-ish. And I was like, what? You the only one thinking of Nene. Talk to that bitch so you can shut up, okay? Ugh, I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all lady. Lady. I'll see y'all later. Hope Pops. Do y'all look at Bev uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I look at that shit. This season look like it's going to be real good. <laughs> I just want to know, who was that that slapped Lisa? <laughs> that weak ass slap. I said that in the previews. I said, oh, shit, that shit is so funny. Uh, they, they, they crazy on that. And that's real money right there. I'll see y'all later.